Okay, 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 versatile vigilante, young Vince, Uncle Vinny, we got a special edition today. We're on location with some legends at the Toronto Black headquarters. We got Mr. Brown Guy made it in the building. Brother, I'm happy to uh, finally come through. It's My been a guy. long time coming. Absolutely, very excited. And your brother, Mr. TK. What's going on, y'all? Thank you for having us. I appreciate you guys, man. Like Brown Guy was saying, this has been in the works. I'm very excited to finally be getting this going. Yeah, man, me too. It's gonna be legendary. So, what are you guys up to, bro? How's, how's uh, life treating you? Oh, bro, life it's good, is bro. Yeah, it's life good. Is good. It's good. It's working every day, you know. So, I want to get into both of your stories, but first off, you both are doing this filming stuff together most of the time, correct? Yeah, yeah. we we work a lot together. <clears throat> Excuse me, we work a lot together. But we still also do like you know our own stuff, like. TK is not signed to Brown Guy. Brown Guy's not signed to TK. You know what I mean? So, but <clears throat> we just kind of come together and just make shit work. Deadly duo. Facts. Mm -hmm. How'd you guys link up in the first place? Oh, I linked up a long time ago. Yeah. I want to say maybe like six, six years ago. Yeah. Okay. At a shoot. Um, I was actually shooting the video and Brown Guy was doing behind the scenes at the time. And, uh, you know, we linked up shot a video there and then ever since then we've been kind of locked in yeah we yeah that that day was crazy i remember it still it was nuts it was super nuts so you both were already doing <clears throat> filming on your own and then kind of yeah so like that. for me i was kind of still new to the whole game <clears throat> um i was working security but i was also doing like um i was working with black of the dawn and like i was doing all his like behind the scenes and stuff like that and then tk was shooting his music videos along with, you know, some other directors, but <clears throat> that day there was the first, like, there, f I'm going to say, like, the third video that I was behind the scenes on for Black, or the first, like, actual music video I was behind the scenes was uh, Black and Tory Lanez. Yo, that's a crazy uh, video to be for your first one. Yo, I'm telling you. Jumped <laughs> into that real quick. <clears throat> yeah, because, like, I went from nightclubs to concerts, and then Black kind of pulled me in, and he's like, yo, hop in, you know, I want to work with you. <clears throat> then we just kind of like clicked from there were you a kid that was like a filming kid you already have a camera and all that or this was random nah, it was it was it was it was kind of sort of random like i was always around it like my grandmother would always film like christmas videos so like i always seen it um <clears throat> and then i'd film fight videos on my cell phones okay um, world but, star like, shit. <laughs> yeah but like when i really really got into like the whole film side um <clears throat> it was super late um, I wanted to shoot, like, I had this idea in my head, like, I'm like, yo, I want to shoot short films and documentaries on at-risk youth, but, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't afford film school, because, like, you know, super low income. Um, <clears throat> so I got, I bought my first camera, actually, it was 10 years ago, like, three days ago. So I was like, I was like, yo, that's crazy. So I, I grabbed the first camera, I started shooting nightclubs with um, my boy Meeks, MC Meeks, all ages. Um... <clears throat> and then yeah man we just kind of grew from there body english body english okay, shout out body english body man. english famous nightclub <laughs> freaking very mississauga city. reference yeah man super super mississauga that's hilarious bro so <clears throat> from that it blossomed into yeah it, it just kind of just kind of blew up i never expected it to get to the level that it got to be around the people i've been around like major and non-major it's nuts, bro. I want to dive into that for more for sure. But TK, I want to hear kind of your origins in this game as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing this for a long time, like I want to say 10 years plus. Uh, grew up like my parents doing like uh, weddings. So my mom and my dad shooting, editing weddings. So I grew up around that. Um, went to school for I didn't. Well, I went to school for a year, but I was doing like editing since I was like grade six, you know, so I've been in, in it for a while. Um even after high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And everyone's just like, yeah, go for the film stuff, you know? So I went to college for a year. It was more theory stuff. So I dropped out and I decided to go like freelance from there. And then since then, I've been shooting nonstop. So. That's unreal. Do you feel like you were learning more from being with your parents than you were kind of in school? Uh, like the hard work stuff. Like I was like wrapping wires, you know, running back and forth, doing like all the extra work. I was doing all that. And when it came to editing... I wasn't really interested in in the weddings, you know what I mean? Um, but I did get a lot of experience from that, you know what I mean? So right. I did learn a lot from that more than I did from school. So 
it's true like that real life experience sometimes yeah. you can't replicate that yeah 100 percent. that's and real more like more hands-on than theory you know what i mean so absolutely and were you working on music videos and stuff like that pretty um, early on actually my first music video was in when i was in college there's an artist there that i was working with and we shot our first video and that's what i used to kind of open the door for everything else just promote it on twitter and then everyone started hitting me up for music videos okay yeah. that was a question i wanted to ask both of you guys like you start with filming stuff you start mastering your craft what did you do with that footage like were you dropping all of it did you have stuff that you kind of stashed watched for yourself how'd that work for you so for me i had <clears throat> like i said right i started nightclubs and concerts like i had a, a plethora of like drives of concert footage from like ace hood to taiga to ti etc etc <clears throat> um i had shutouts from all these guys but all my old old footage it's all gone because hard drives got corrupted and i'm i'm stupid and i never you know backed anything up i've learned from that stuff yo even just today <laughs> being around all this equipment and stuff like that it reminds you how complex filming can actually be sometimes like yeah it's a camera but it's there's so crazy. much shit to go into this uh, it's yeah. a lot it's a lot behind the scenes that people don't see tons bro hard drive the average person would not think about hard drives at all meanwhile it's like oh my gosh yeah, like even that. back in the day it was so rough like i was working with like uh, adobe premiere cs3 and like there's no auto save there's nothing and it's just crashing you know you complete the project and then like seconds later the whole thing crashes file corrupted like been through it all so technology has definitely changed you know so it's changed a lot and mm. that's an interesting point too where it's like I think if you ask most most people in like the filming world, they'll say like they had a rough go or they lost footage, they lost files. Overcoming that, how how did that work for you guys? Because for a young filmer, that could be traumatic. What's yeah. some advice you could potentially <laughs> give of how to? Oh fuck, I lost the sick footage. What do I do from here? What's some advice you would say? Back everything up. <clears throat> you know, if you're gonna buy a. And don't buy, don't buy spinning disk hard drives, buy SSDs. Like now, if you're starting now or, or you're, you know, you're getting into it, <clears throat> excuse me, get SSDs because like they don't have no moving parts. So it's less likely for them to fail. They'll still fail, but it's less likely. Even technology now, it's just like you can depend on it, but you can at the same time, you know? So always back things up. Even if you're at a point where you've lost footage, there's ways to recover it but even if you can't you kind of have to work around it you know what i mean right better safe than sorry yeah 100 percent. just back it up two three times if you have to understood so going back to working with different artists you mentioned black of the dawn i yeah. noticed you've worked with him for a long time <clears throat> yeah tied in with him Sheffy as well someone you worked a ton with was that something you thought of early where you really want to like develop that relationship with the artist and keep it moving yeah to be honest with you that's that's the biggest thing right like this whole <clears throat> business is about relationships right it's about it's about building a trust it's about building just in general with someone like i can look at blacka and like he can look at me and just be like and then boom i know what he's thinking and boom i can run to that side or i can go like this or and I, and you learn from people that you build with f what actually goes on in their head so you can pull like you can hear a song and be like okay so blacka would want to shoot it like this so let's figure it out like this or <clears throat> um let's say let's say cash poppy would would want to shoot it like this let's shoot it like this or big money would want to shoot it like this let's shoot it like this right everybody has their own styles and when you build that relationship and that that like yeah when you build that relationship it's just <clears throat> it's uh genuine right so I think building relationships is so important, you know what I mean? Because you have that connection and it's just things work easier, right? So. Absolutely, bro. That's a cliche, but mm -hmm. it's it's not what you know. It's who you know. Exactly. It's super yeah. true. It makes your life easier. So. Go to different levels mm -hmm. and you probably thought you couldn't. Massive. Yeah. You guys yeah. both work together on, on um, videos for Black and Sheffy and those guys. You oh, both yeah. kind of share that yeah. relationship yeah. too. Yeah. I love that. That's like building a team from the core. 100% yeah. teamwork is, is yeah. key, right? Hell yeah. That's why we work so well together because we know, like, we always sit down, we have planned videos, you know, we always talk with the artists, like, the relationship is there, you know what I mean? So it just turns out, everything turns out better, even the final product, right? So, so when you guys started working together, did you notice that you were improving at different 
phases like oh tk was doing something i wasn't doing brown guy was doing something i wasn't doing you felt like you got stronger from doing that 100 percent. i'll I'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell everybody like yo right now brown guy would be shit without tk yeah right you know what i mean like just having those those extra pair of eyes and that 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 second mind to kind of help expand yours it just makes everything so much easier I think the more people you have the, on, the, on the team, the better, right? Because you may see one thing differently and everybody else might see a different perspective, right? right? So, like, even if brown guy doesn't see something, I'll see it. If I don't see it, brown guy sees it. That's why we work so well because we bounce ideas off each other, especially to the artists as well, right? We very uh, keep the communication all the way around. That's a great point because you might see something completely different than mm-hmm. than your partner would or someone else would and then that opens up a huge lane for yeah. you 100 percent, 100 percent. i love that do you guys feel like there's a director community in toronto yeah yeah 100%. even brown guy like i i first saw you on camera from that interview that you did with uh, we love hip-hop okay. with m works shout out m works yeah shout and out our, um, KR. kr yeah 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 and like, legends legends like between the three of you that's fucking millions of views on youtube tons of 100%, bangers 100 percent. and what's crazy is i had never met m works before but i'd always talked to him um <clears throat> i didn't think i had ever met kr but like I'm, I went to KR, I'm like, yo, bro, it's a pleasure to meet you. He's like, yo, brown guy, you don't remember me? I'm like, nah. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, bro, I asked you about camera equipment on that on that overboard uh, uh, club event. I'm like, what? I'm like, say word, <laughs> you know? And it's just it's just crazy how like yeah, man, we we, we we're all together. <clears throat> it's tied in because yo, Toronto, we see the rappers a lot of the time. We see the publicity that they get. But meanwhile, you guys are behind a lot of their biggest hits, a lot of their biggest videos. So I think it's important that you, got, you guys do stick together and have platforms to speak out. So when I saw all three of you guys doing that, I thought that was so mm. cool. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> this is a good option as well. No, bro. definitely. It, it's dope to see, you know, more, more like interviewers and podcasts and, and just shows in general, like reach out to the directors as well, because... <clears throat> a lot of directors really should get that light too because they're, they're crazy. Don't look at a Razio. Yes, that oh, man yeah. is nuts. <laughs> yeah. Look Bro. at Samurai. Samurai is crazy. Jacob Ettinger, etc. Right? They're all amazing at what they do, but they don't get that 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 light. Yeah, absolutely. Did you guys feel like that was something you you wanted? Like you wanted that exposure a little bit more. You wanted a little bit more of like how to get your brand out there. I mean, for me, no. Because, like, to be honest with you, I didn't, I, I didn't want people seeing my face, but my whole brand mm-hmm. is my face, right? But, like, one thing I did is I also own a hip-hop blog, right? So I own What The Hype since 2015. And one thing What The Hype does is, you know, we really put on for the directors, right? Oh. So there's, <clears throat> it gives them that, but, like, yeah, but we don't really need that light because what we do, but we don't need the same kind of spotlight that, let's say, like, a rapper does. Because our brand is on the video anyways, in most cases. So if anybody like likes our work, like say someone likes Nemesis' work, right? Yeah. <clears throat> they see Shout out Nemesis, Media. by the way. They see Goldmine Media, Nem- and boom, they, they Google it. Or they see TK, boom, Google it. They see Brown Guy, boom, Google it. Right? So it's not hard to find us, but <clears throat> it is dope to see other directors' perspectives when they are on platforms like this. Also, with that being said, our work speaks for ourselves, you know what I mean? And the way we put ourselves out there and the content that we're putting out, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that really gives us a shine at the same time. But even the podcast interview stuff, that even gives another perspective from people behind the scenes. I love that phrase of the work speaks for itself because mm-hmm. especially in today's day and age, a lot of you know social media craziness, like huge characters out there. If you keep it to just having that quality work, doing that good business it keeps your brand clean i feel and, and people know you're about what you're about 100 percent. that's huge when did the uh the face start to be the like the logo bro because so, i see i see your face on friday ricky dreads laptop every time. All the time over here i see your face all over bro where did that come from yeah man so like it's always been brown guy's always been a face <clears throat> this final form of the logo is like five iterations Okay. So, like, it went from one, and, and it all stemmed from a photo of my actual face. <clears throat> I have a boy who lives in, uh, who lives in uh, uh, Ottawa, and he designed the first logo. And, like, it wasn't even, it was, like, a massive head in, like, this red velour suit. 
<clears throat> that was brown guy made it at that time i seen that one actually yeah and like you know i think the first time that we really really pushed on that logo um was all ages days and i put the logo on bras and panties and sold a crap ton of them <clears throat> that's when i knew that like yo merch and branding is crazy it's a huge loophole man mm-hmm. yeah. brown guy bras we need another <laughs> drop of that Bro, I, what's crazy i still have people asking like yo are you gonna make those again nah not gonna make them again <laughs> that's smart bro that's a good way to talk to girls too there yeah, we go 100 percent, 100 percent. loopholes loopholes super loopholes you could look like the value village dj Khaled, the girl you want <laughs> <laughs> i love that bro and then from there it just kept building <clears throat> yeah it just kept building and like i i always wanted a new iteration because i wasn't really a hundred percent satisfied like as i grew right so <clears throat> this final iteration was done by a, a legendary rapper in the city by the name of Tommy Spitz. He's also, you know, he also does art. And, like, Sick. he designed it. And, like, bro, I've turned it into the stickers, to the merch, to the chain, to everything. Like, that is the Brown Guy brand now. It's brilliant, bro. Seeing that inspires me, like, to try to build my own brand. I see what you're doing. I'm like, okay, that that that's a very smart thing to do where it's not that complicated. It's just working and make sure making sure you, you get yourself out there. 100%. That's real. It's all about, you know, just pushing it, right? You have to be in people's faces. It's like <clears throat> when you watch a brown guy video, right? Like a video that I shot. What do you, what's the first thing you hear? You're watching a blah, 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 brown guy made a visual, right? So, like, it implants in your head. And that's all branding and marketing is, is making sure that it, it you know, that it'll, it'll get implanted in your brain subliminally. They see that logo, they know what it is. Mm-hmm. They know where to go. Exactly. That's real. Learned a lot from this guy. So, you know, branding <laughs> is super key, yeah. right? So, and branding is everything. Even just not for me, like you said, it's, it's better for everybody. You know, you just have to find something that works for you and just push that in any way possible. Absolutely. Where's the TK stickers at, man? Oh, on the way, bro. On the way. Yeah, I gotta like even from just learning. I'm tr- I'm also trying to figure out like what could work for me. You know what I mean? The merch stuff like that. Try not to be exactly the same, but in my own way, in my own creative way, try to put that out there, right? So. Hundred percent. And I'm laughing because we got these supreme microphones right here, like branding kings. <laughs> it's, it's so true, man. Mm, that man. that logo, it could do a ton for you. Oh yeah, for 100%. sure. For sure. Do you get this is a question I just thought of. Do you guys feel like by selling that merch and promoting that brand, it maybe takes some pressure off of your creative stuff? Because maybe a little more freedom to, to shoot what you want to shoot or do what you want to do because you have an other income stream? 100% for me, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> like with me, even with merch, right? Like I sell merch and 95% of like 90, not, let, let, let's say like 90% of the demographic that buys my merch are females so it's like the females are always advertising brown guy which means that the men will follow right <clears throat> so it does take you know a lot of pressure off where it's like yo damn yo i'm broke i need to go and yo music video i don't care what it is i can still exactly choose who i want to work with exactly that's that's kind of what i was thinking because we see a lot like a rapper puts out a song director puts out a video but where does the money come from right and i think that's an important part of being a creative figuring out how do we support ourselves mm-hmm. when you guys were starting off was that a struggle for you oh, yeah. mm-hmm. but when i was starting off i was charging 60 dollars for a music video traveling to kitchener shooting music videos and i'm i'm paying for the gold bus out of that 60 dollars. right <clears throat> right so it's like yeah man it was definitely hard but at the same time i was also working a real job Right. So I had that source of income. And then this was just kind of like, OK, I want to learn. So I was willing to just bully my way into the into it. Right. Was there ever a time? And, and I asked this because I think it's important to talk about. Were there ever times when you were thinking about dropping the camera and just going to do some other shit? All the time. Yeah. All the time. For to me. This to this day. For me, I don't know. Like the camera saved my life for That's- sure. You know what I mean? Just picking it up and doing what I do is like, I love it. You know what I mean? So it's like, in a way, there's been times where I sit back and I'm just like, damn, like, you know, but at the end of the day, I know like that is for me. Right. So right. Yeah. like you were getting into trouble or you just didn't have like the direction you wanted. Uh, like even just growing up, like aside from my parents, you know what I mean? Just like from everybody else it was hard because like 
yeah, people are telling me visuals are sick and all, but like there wasn't that support that we have now. You know what I mean? So it was, it was much more harder back in the day, but like I don't think I ever dropped the camera. You know what I mean? If I do, it's something f- like more for behind the scenes stuff, right? Right. So. You, it's a love. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like, I won't ever drop it. Like in the beginning, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I was in the beginning. I was always pawning off my camera. Like I was taking it to the pawn shops. I needed the money. Um, <clears throat> I was going to sell it all, and like I, be- I I strongly, strongly, strongly believe in the universe. Right, the universe has a plan, it has a path, and you know it's just up to you to follow it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I I was gonna sell the camera. This is when I had the Canon T2i, and I got a phone call from somebody by the name of Curly. If you were at Body English, you probably know Curly the MC. You know, he called me. He's like, "Yo, brown guy, your camera's charged." I'm like, "Yeah." <clears throat> Super attitude too. Like I was just not having it. I was like, "Yeah, why?" He's like, yo, bro, get ready. I'm like, why? He's like, don't worry. Just get ready. And the guy, so he came to my house. He picked me up. I'm like, yo, where are we going? He's like, don't worry. He brought me to Luxie. And I'm there. And I'm like, okay, why are we here? I hate Luxies. Rest in peace, Luxies, by the way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I hate Luxies. Brings me in. He brings me backstage. And Ace Hood is standing there. And this is when he had, like, that major hit Bugatti. Bugatti. Right? And, like, Ivan Berrios is there, who's now DJ Khaled's, like, main camera guy. And Curly's like, yeah, bro, I want you to shoot. I'm like, yo, bro, this is crazy. Like, I just wanted to sell my stuff. And then the universe put me here. So I was like, yo, I just can't, I can't sell it. <clears throat> I got to keep pushing. There's a bigger picture. So, but even now, like, I still sometimes I want to, you know, I want to give up because it's just so much. There's a lot of stress within this, but it's like, yo, you just have to sit back Take a deep breath, have a woo-saw moment, and just keep pushing. And just keep going. <clears throat> Real shit. And I asked you that question for that, because I knew you would say something like that, where it's like, yeah, hard times are here, but if you really love it and really want to mm-hmm. do it, got to keep mm-hmm. going. 100%. Because yeah. I, I think, going back to social media shit, like there's kind of an instant gratification thing going on, where mm-hmm. it's like, I got to post this, immediate likes, if I don't get it, it's fucked. Meanwhile, there's struggle in anything you do, mm-hmm. but if you're really about it you gotta keep pushing yeah it's all about getting back up you know what i mean yeah so hell yeah man i like how you're bringing up luxy too this is bringing me back 2010 (laughs) gta club life yeah man yeah come a long way really hot bro came a long way from 416 ali just to where we are now bro (laughs) real shit (laughs) yo you you mentioned you um your your demographic a lot of females and you work with a lot of models i see so you work with a lot of artists rappers but models as well what would you say is the biggest difference between working with models and working with rappers working with models they just kind of like you tell them what to do and they just do it right if they don't want to do it they'll be like no i don't want to do it but then you have certain models where like I have one model where <clears throat> I could be at a at a condo and it could have like a crazy bathroom and I'm not even thinking of like, you know, a bathroom scene or any or like a shower scene or anything. And I could look at this girl and be like, yo, see the shower? And she'll be like, yo, boom. You know, she's just down to do whatever because she knows that, you know, the vision's there. Um, <clears throat> but I also have like, I have that good relationship with models because I'm not a creep. I might be a brown guy, but I'm not a creep. You know Facts. what I mean? There's a lot of there's a lot of incidents, you know. Yeah. What we've heard. There's so. a lot of guys with cameras. Yeah, you just gotta I, keep it professional and you know, keep it going. Real shit. I like that you brought that up though, because it's again, it's your brand. Mm-hmm. Like if you were doing some some weird shit, it reflects that, on you. It reflects on you. That word gets out. You know, everything's got to be solid everywhere we go. Business. Exactly. How you carry yourself. Fuck exactly. with that. <clears throat> yeah, man, it's 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 about keeping models comfortable, right? Yeah. Because if a model is comfortable, then we're blessed. Okay, so quick technical difficulty, but I want to bring something up that we talked about during the break that was quite interesting. We were all talking about how not really like naturally wanting to be like in front of the camera, don't really like hearing yourselves talk, maybe even more <laughs> on the introverted side, if that's fair to oh, say. Yeah, yeah. Very relatable. I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. You guys feel like since you've been doing what you're doing, it's helped you break out of your shell a little bit? For me, <clears throat> um, kind of. Like for me, what, what helped me break out of my shell was uh, when I did security, because I did events. 
<clears throat> and I did like artist protection and clo- like close protection right. and shit like that. Um, let's say ten years ago, I couldn't speak to people. Like I stutter a lot, and <clears throat> I don't know what it was. Whether it was like just nervousness or just something in my brain that was like, "Shut up! You're, you everything you say is stupid," right? Um, <clears throat> but now it's kind of like I'm a lot better. And yeah, definitely the security definitely pu- pushed me out of my shell. Um, this stuff here has pushed me out of my shell as well. And being sober pushed me out of mm. my, my shell. You used <clears throat> to go hard? Oh, bro, I used to go <laughs> stupid. Yeah? <laughs> Drinking mostly? Drinking a lot of weed. Okay. <clears throat> um, like, I was TT before Robin Banks made up TT. Shout out Mr. TT. <laughs> Mr. TT. That's interesting, bro. Was there like a... Not to get too Dr. Phil-ish, but was there like a rock bottom where you're like, no, nah, this can't keep going? Yeah, it was kind of like <clears throat> when with, with, with weed, it was more the fact that I get mad anxiety and I get, I guess, I get super paranoid. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. I used to smoke a lot of weed and I used to be fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. But like I got that happened to me and I was like, okay, this is no more. And then with drinking, I, uh, it was when I remember taking a shot of tequila and then I remember waking up in front of my doorstep because I had f- passed out. I blacked out. I fainted. I smashed my head off of a marble floor and all of my boys picked me up, threw me in a van and brought me home. <clears throat> and like, I was still a big guy back then. So like all these scrawny little guys are picking me up and putting me in a van. I'm like, yo, you know what? This isn't for me no more. Mm-hmm. let me just focus even uh, for me like super introvert right um like i'm just a quiet laid-back guy you know what i mean but when it comes to certain things i i overlook everything you know make sure everything's good whatever and then i think just even hanging out with the right people like me hanging out with brown guy it's really brought me out more you know meeting different people just going through the whole experience you know what i mean and then even with just being sober too you know what i mean it really keeps you locked in and focused so you you touched on interesting points there one for sure like the company you keep is huge bro yeah. like, i think everyone will experience that at some point where it's like mm-hmm. if these people are doing not the best stuff it's putting me in a bad position so mm-hmm. being around people yeah. that are doing good stuff is massive mm-hmm thing that was interesting what you guys are saying with sober you're freaking directing rap videos rappers are notorious Mm -hmm. for turning up yeah that temptation for you guys is that awkward or you just feel like fuck it it's here for business there'll be times where they just like yo take a shot (laughs) dude you know did this and that but like before it was like it was bad you know like basically you're working and you're under the influence you know so there i've had moments where like lost footage that's where it comes back to lost footage this and that unprofessionalism right uh obviously learning experience but it's also like okay like you know there's a time and place even when we eat we don't even eat when we shoot we wait Mm -hmm. till after everything's done make sure everything's good and then take a break right yeah for me i just not like i'll drink on occasion like if i haven't seen an artist in like years i'll have a shot with them or like if i if the artist is always asking me to like, yo, brown guy, take a shot. Yo, brown guy, take a shot. And like, I want them not to drink on set. I'll be like, yo, listen, <laughs> after this video is done, if you don't drink, I'll take a shot with you. Love that. You know what I mean? I use it. I, it's like you know, some safe extortion. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's real. <laughs> that's hilarious. Man. That, that, that's conversation. Again, I like to have because Yo, the job you guys do is not the safest, bro. Nah. Like, you, you you, guys have to go to specific areas sometimes that could be dangerous. Being around people where even you don't really know what they're doing on their off time, bro. Maybe mm-hmm. some problems come with that. So, again, talking about this, I think it's good for people to hear. Like, yo, you got to take these things serious. Mm-hmm. You got to mm-hmm. move serious. You got to move appropriately. Is that something you guys learned? Obviously, with the alcohol and stuff like that, but dealing with kind of the other street type shit yeah. oh yeah the whole <clears throat> yeah the whole thing <laughs> yeah, definitely been through some situations that made mm-hmm. me like rethink how i moved my business and how i was business wise <clears throat> um so when i started like introducing production agreements and like it 
the production agreement allowed me to kind of filter my market and my demographic because if you don't want to sign my production agreement and follow the steps around, I don't want to work with you because you're not about business. Right. Right. Um, I'm a businessman. Right. That's all I do. Is I, I just work. Right. If I'm not shooting a music video or if I'm not shooting a video in general, I'm in my room or I'm here. Right. So, <clears throat> but yeah, the contracts or sorry, production agreements definitely changed a lot. Mm hmm. It's great advice. And, and Jay-ZB yeah. brought that up in our interview. Shout out Jay-ZB. But Shout out Jay -Z -B. like you doing that influenced someone younger trying to do their thing to mm -hmm. do that too. So I think it's making a difference, bro. No, 100%. So she's definitely, uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll forever co-sign her. It's definitely say that she's going to be a legendary creative. Facts, in this yeah, city. she has a lot of potential. <clears throat> so. Same Young with group. Seth. Yeah. Seth too has an amazing potential. And he, he's, just, he's surrounded by like some amazing people too. Like my name French. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> they're so fucking young too it's Yo, ridiculous bro. and see the thing with that is now is like guiding them properly you know mm -hmm. what i mean because back in the day not many people had that kind of like somebody to Facts. look up to or somebody to guide you right Facts. so it's like it's our jobs like the older heads to kind of just you know like you're doing the right thing okay this is what you should do and they just follow after that right yeah it's the main reason why like a lot of young upcoming directors <clears throat> or even photographers, right? They'll message me and be like, yo, can I come shoot on your set, whatever? Yeah, come through. Because when I was coming up, I'd ask certain people for advice. Yo, go Google it. From here. But if I ask guys in the States, yeah, yeah, this is how you do it. No problem, blah, blah, blah. So I learned that we shouldn't be gatekeeping information because, yo, bro, we're not, I, me personally, I'm not trying to take anybody else's gigs. I'm not trying to take anybody else's clients. I'm building my own thing. I'm not trying to be like you either, right? <clears throat> I might take inspiration, but I'll take that inspiration and sprinkle that brown guy sauce on it and oh, turn it into, you know, brown guy style or TK style. That's Real about shit. working working together. Mm -hmm. It's, it's about thing. working together, mm -hmm. man. Why worry about competition why exactly. worry about what can they do that's taking energy away from us doing our thing yeah exactly that's awesome I, that's one of the main reasons i wanted to talk to you guys because you're always like promoting that yeah like, man, you're i get promoting free game community. all the time it's huge man you wherever, don't wherever we can help you know what i mean so that's real and that's where i think that longevity <sighs> will come from man you guys keep doing your thing breeding this next generation mm -hmm. yeah keeps your you guys around too facts massive man <clears throat> um you say something in your i forget if you've said it in videos i've heard you say it before for sure where you say i'm not shooting diss songs or like violent songs mm -hmm. you did that in the past yeah i shot a lot of <clears throat> diss <laughs> records and whatnot because i didn't you know i'm not from the streets you know what right. i mean i might have grown up in that environment but i'm not from that environment i never claimed that environment um <clears throat> so like you know i'm not really with like all the politics that are going on. i don't understand them and i never will yep. um i'd love to see artists come together but unfortunately you know it's the politics but yeah man i've i've shot some diss records and it to me it just i see it like this <clears throat> me or any other director shooting a diss record or something that might be dissing someone who's passed away it's almost like you're co-signing it Mm -hmm. right Facts. and i don't want to co-sign that i'm not about it um i feel like you know if someone's gone like say they you know they passed away let them rest like just stop smoking on so and so and smoking on this it, to me it just doesn't make sense um but yeah man definitely like don't be wrong, right? Well, sh I've shot by the records recently, but it's like they're not dissing anybody. Right. And we're putting an actual story behind it. Because remember, hip hop is about telling a story, yeah. right? It's about rapping about your life. It's poetry. So if you want me to shoot a, a video where you you know you might be talking about running a drill or whatever, and you just want to like go stand on top of the dumpster outside, no, nah, I'm good. Nope. But now if you want to like make a movie... Yo, holler at me. Yeah, Tell that story. Yeah. Exactly. But just make sure there's no like subliminals dissing someone and stuff like that because I just don't co sign it. And like you said, it reflects on our image, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And on the business, right? And uh, then it just gets us into situations that we don't need, right? Exactly. Because so. you hear about that. When you hear about um, people that aren't really involved in the shit, now they're involved in it. 
Mm-hmm. And it's a very dangerous situation, man. So if you're dealing with people that don't play about that. Yeah. Got to be very careful. Exactly. Real shit. It's, uh, you, I like how you said too, where it's like, it doesn't make sense. Like promoting that stuff, doing it is not good for a community. It's not 100%. good for anyone, really. It's not good for your money. 100%. No, you know, it's, it's, why, why even fuck with it? Why even promote 100%. it? It's, it's, <clears throat> I see like a lot of directs that'll do it because it's easy money. It's quick right. money, right? But quick money isn't forever money, right? Um, so like, yeah, man, a lot of directors will shoot it because it's, they can grow with it as well, right? Because let's be honest, us as humans, we love negativity, right? Negativity draws us. That's why all these blogs are posting nothing but negative stuff, right? Because it stirs conversation in the, in, in the comments. For sure. And it, 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 it just brings out of views, etc. So yeah, man, it, it makes sense in a way where like, okay, they're using it to market themselves, but <clears throat> the meaning behind it doesn't make sense to mm. them. Exactly. It's not, it's not good at the end of the no. day. No, definitely not. You guys see, when you started shooting, do you feel like it's more geared towards that now as composed to then? Like the, like the disrespectful music? I think it's gotten worse. Yeah. It's gotten Way a lot worse, worse. Because it's not even just us. It's kind of like all over the world. You know, it's just passing through people getting inspiration, this and that, right? Back in the day, it wasn't so... It was bad, but it wasn't as serious as it is now, right? And then it also involves, like, the gun violence in the city. You know what I mean? It just keeps escalating. And it's also our part to kind of stay away from that and try to come together as a collective and try to go against the violence in the city, right? So. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's a tricky balance because it's, like, you, as a creative, you want to promote being creative freedom, you know, do mm-hmm. what you got to do. But at the same time, when it's very negative, it's... You know, it's, it's kind of crossing that boundary that could yeah. cause some problems. Yeah, yeah. Real shit. How how do you guys feel about Toronto like scene right now? I asked you that too because you've been around. You've been <laughs> yeah. around for multiple scenes. Yeah, like I think this 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 current state of music in the city um, is good. Don't get me wrong, right? Like people like we're evolving and personally i think if we didn't have so much politics we would be the number i've said this before we'd be the Mm. number one city in the world for hip hop, right like yo we breed talent right whether it's it doesn't even just have to be hip-hop right like think of like legends in the music industry and nine out of ten times they're canadian yeah drake shania twain um celine dion jb justin bieber You know, the weekend, weekend. party next door. Yo, bro, party needs to come back. (laughs) Um, Roy Woods, Nav, Tory Lanez. I could go on. Nickelback is from here. Huge. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. Exactly. 100% agree. I mean, so like, I definitely feel like hip-hop-wise, we could be number one. But there's too much going on behind the scenes. I agree. I think it's a cycle. Like, I feel like it'll kind of change due to over time. Like if you look back on it, like 2017, like Lil Pump was like the biggest artist mm-hmm. in the world for a bit. Horrible like music. Psych- that was a crazy time, right? Horrible yeah. music. But it's like sometimes things just filter themselves out. And mm. I feel like mm-hmm. maybe in a couple of years, that violent, violent, like op shit might be a thing of the past, you know? I hope so. I, I hope so too. Awesome. Yeah. Because it's also going to remember, right? Music influences a lot of things, right? Definitely and like does. me, I'm all about the youth. I'm all for the youth and the youth being successful and, and you know, because they're, they're our next leaders. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you know, so if we're continuously keeping this wave of music, right, then it's influencing the kids like, yo, I need to be like this rather than them trying to move forward and becoming, you know, something a lot better within music or trying mm-hmm. to change music. Exactly. Um, touching on the community stuff, is there is that something that's in your like like long-term plans like oh yeah focusing on that sort of thing 100 percent. like like i said right my whole <clears throat> i don't know if i said it on here if it was when we were talking before my whole background is because i wanted to shoot short films and documentaries on average yeah. youth right so i want to show the youth how to turn a negative into a positive i want to show them that like Yo, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of youth that are going through it, especially after COVID, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of youth that are going through it, and they don't understand what's going on because they're so young. 
that, you know, a lot of kids are taking their lives, right? And it's sad to see. So it's just about hopefully, yeah, so hopefully next year, you know, we can start our first short film on that subject. I love that. If you need help with that, I'd love to help. 100%, too. man. I definitely want to do, <clears throat> before COVID was a thing, I was going to do a drop-in program for kids, you know, at rescue, yeah. um, where they could learn anything from film, photography, graphic mm -hmm. design, um, beat production, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and bring like people of influence who they've, they've, they've watched or they've seen their work or they've heard their work to kind of teach them like, you know, a one day class, like holler at, I don't know, guys like see if Zach Fax would have been down to come through and, and, you know, show a cinematography course to yep. these youth, mm -hmm. right? But COVID hit. So I want to try to do that within like the next year or two as well. That would be sick. Mworks talked about that on my show, bro. Like, I think that would be sick. Yeah. Uh, some powerhouse directors teaching kids how yeah. to do that. That's 100%. amazing. 100%. Like, with me, like, you could ask TK, if there's a kid on set, yo, come. Yeah. You know, you're interested in this? Yeah, this is cool. All right, cool. Let's film. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, because that, that little bit of a positive influence could change their whole change life. Change their whole life. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Set them on a certain path. Man. 100%. And they'll always remember that moment too mm -hmm. you know what i mean absolutely yeah. everyone as a kid i think we're all looking for that little like someone that's cool, cool yeah. and like doing their thing exactly mm -hmm. love that man yo i gotta ask you i'm name dropping a lot but it's all for a reason <laughs> Uh, shout out Dimitri the Shooter Apostle of Shout Films. out Dimitri. Film, Yo, I was, I was talking to him a few months back and he name dropped you because he you kind of put him onto a potential riffraff job. Yeah, a yeah. Huge riffraff fan, bro. <clears throat> Tell yeah, me you have a couple stories lit. about that time. Yo, riffraff was lit. Let, I'll, I'll say this first off. I have footage of riffraff dissing me in a rap it's done i feel proud after you that. gotta put that out you know somehow, like <laughs> um but not yet though. the whole riffraff situation was um dan barker um was with riffraff and yeah. he was they they were looking for an artist to do a feature with and dan hit up uh, our manager johnny bravo and he's like yo i want black on a record with riffraff so we made it happen black ran to i think it was eastbound studio they recorded it that night, um, then sent it to Riff Raff, and Riff Raff started posting it with, like, bands, because, you know, the song was called Bands in Advance. And, uh, yeah, we went and performed, I think it was the Phoenix Concert Hall. Phoenix? Yeah, I think yep. it was the Phoenix. And, you know, we shot part of the music video, like, Dan Barker shot part of the music video there with, uh, I think Dimitri was there. Um, <clears throat> and then, damn, yeah, we performed, we shot the music video, and then uh, Riff Raff was looking back, and he's like, yo, come on the rest of the tour with me. So, like, we went to, like, five or six different cities with Riff Raff, and, like, just seeing Riff in his element, like, in the studio or off of stage, etc., it's inspiring, because, like, yo, that guy is actually a genius. Huge. He, the guy is a genius. Yo, the stuff that he says and that he comes up with and seeing how he records... Bro, I sat there insane. and I was like, yo, this guy is insane. Insane, yeah. Like, yo, he will record one bar, stop, tell the engineer to play it back, he'll listen, and he'll be like, okay, go in. He'll record the next bar. Then he'll record the next bar, and then the next bar. And it's like, yo, he's very, like, in his head about it. And Bro, I'm convinced he's not a human. Like, I, he's <laughs> from somewhere I else. Believe, yeah, nah, he's, he's definitely not human. That he's man, definitely, yeah, he's that man is lit, though. That man is super lit. Super lit. Were you were there too, TK? No, I wasn't. I wasn't there around that time. Uh, TK went ghost. I went. I disappeared <laughs> for a bit. I had to pull him out of uh, hibernation. <laughs> that's all right, man. Again, that's what friends are for. Exactly. Hundred yeah. percent. I love a good riffraff talk, bro. Thank Yo, you for bro. sharing that. <laughs> shout Always out riffraff, so man. Big shout out riffraff. Um, and uh, we're gonna wrap this up shortly. But you actually touched on one other thing that was interesting, where you're talking about kind of in the states, um, maybe a little less hesitant to help each other out mm -hmm. is that something you would see yourself doing one day like permanently permanently heading out to the states maybe la or new york something like that 100 percent, 100 percent. i think that's like everybody's dream right especially if you're from here because let's be honest right like our market within what we do is very low compared to like the states or europe etc so 
if you want to blow, you have to blow elsewhere. Kind of the Tory Lanez method, right? Yeah. Tory Lanez was here. He wasn't really getting super popping. Like, he was popping, but he wasn't popping. He went to Europe, blew the fuck up. He went to the States, blew the fuck up even more. Mm -hmm. And then everybody from Canada was like, yo, Tory, that's my guy, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it was just kind of like, I was able to kind of watch the path that Tory went to success, which is dope. Super dope. It's an influence. Exactly. It, it shows that, like, yo, bro, anybody can really do it. And, like, because Tory blew, he brought Zach Fax with him. And Zach Fax is, that man is a legend, legend. behind the camera. Mm -hmm. Like, that man, I watched that man shoot a music video with an FX700, which was, like, it was good, but it wasn't, like, the craziest camera at the time. An Odyssey Q7 recorder and, you know, handheld. And that man's handheld shots looked like they were on a, like, they were on a stabilizer. Like, just watching him work was crazy. That's huge, man. And now they're both kind of killing they're huge. it. Mm -hmm. huge. Brands on their own. Yeah, man, huge. How about you, TK? Would you ever see yourself moving permanently? Mm -hmm. Even not permanently for a couple years, maybe? Yeah, I would, like, I've been in L.A. a few times. Supposed to go back maybe next month or so. Hopefully, brown guy, we get brown guy over there, too. Coming, man. Yeah. Coming. So, it's like, it's a different lifestyle there, and I feel like it's very fast-paced, but the community there is more supportive, right? So, it's it doesn't hurt to go out there. But me, I wouldn't live there permanently, but I would probably stay there off and on, come back Extended and forth. Stay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Fuck with that. The last question I really like to talk to directors about specifically, are you guys big, like, movie guys? I don't mind watching movies. Yeah. You know, I've been on movie sets. I was on a set of Pixels. If you Adam know that Sandler. Movie, yeah. My boy was on that set too. <clears throat> I was That's Adam hilarious. Sandler's personal security guard for that. How was that? <sighs> Fucking lit. <laughs> lit. Adam Sandler runs around, man. Yo, bro, that man is the most humble person I've ever met in my life. And like, actually, I can't, Kate. Yeah, he, he, he's one of the most humble people I've met in my life still. And I've met some like artists that are real assholes and some that are super dope. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. I got to meet like Christopher Columbus too because he directed that movie and got to see how they like put the real like 3D effects in Video Village as it's just on like these Mini Coopers filmed with cameras. But yeah, nah, definitely. That's not. Do you feel like you got a little inspired from that? Oh, bro, I learned so much. Must have been <clears throat> an experience, yo. That's yeah, crazy. Experience. I felt how I felt on that set was how you felt on the set of Titans when we walked through. Oh yeah, when we walked <laughs> through the set of tit Titans, it was it was crazy. Yeah crazy is that something you guys see yourselves going into maybe like a feature length type 100%. that's the goal Hollywood 100%. style oh yeah 100%. 100%. I want bear explosions <laughs> yeah bear michael explosions. bay right here blow it up. <laughs> facts see, see see the seven series there yo gucci i'm gone. sorry bro it's blowing up <laughs> kaboom insurance <laughs> love that nah, yeah, even man, me definitely. like i never really grew up watching movies and stuff like that but then once i started getting into film i started like seeing movies differently like how they shot it it's like okay i know how to do that or i know how they did that right but yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah i think i think when it comes to like movies it was it was definitely um a lot of you know i like cartoons so like i like regular movies but like i like cartoons uh, maybe i'm weird but well, it's definitely those anime. cartoon movies, <laughs> not anime. I, I can't sit I'm through an anime. anime. There's like seven thousand episodes. <laughs> anime, I feel like you have to be kind of faded while watching. <laughs> I don't know. I Way don't, too many episodes. Got a smoke or something before yeah. that. <laughs> Shout out anime. Um, that was fucking hilarious, man. Yo, I really appreciate your guys' time, though. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. Very you, man. new experience, bro. In my spot, it's a fucking cell phone camera. And a couple of microphones here we got. I feel like yeah, we're like in four cameras. Disney World or some <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> so Yo, I also want to give a shout out to to our host, man, Toronto Black. Shout out Toronto Black. Facts. Um, we'll put your social medias up here and all that. Shout out everyone in the back, too. Everyone here helped set up the cameras. I really appreciate that. Facts. Shout out to you guys, man. Mm. What do you guys got going on? What do you want to promote, plug? Mm, we got a lot of things going on but most importantly sh uh shout out toronto black uh they got a we got a, we got a lot of things coming up you know um yeah. a lot of big projects a lot of things in the work and then shout out all the creatives in the city facts everybody behind <clears throat> the scenes putting in work day and night facts facts shout out shout out like yo shout out gucci toronto.black yeah. yo make sure y'all log on to toronto.black 
Toronto.black. 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 Yeah. Um, or else Chucky's going to stab <laughs> Chucky. Shout out Brothers Grimm Vodka. Yeah, shout out Brothers um, Grimm. Shout out like, uh, um, I went mind blank. Yo, you can find me, www.brownguymadeit.com. What the hype dossier is coming back December 1st. Um, or you can find us outside shooting a music video. That too. That too. Outside. And like, you know, you can ask me for stickers, but just remember you're getting branded. That's it. That's it. Love it. <laughs> Shout out Jay Z B and Seth G as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh. Shout out to them. Hell yeah. Shout out to them. Shout out to Nemesis for helping Shout us. Shout out Nem. Setting up the camera. Shout, Shout out here, bro. Yeah, man. Presidential, Shout out presidential shots. shots. There we go. Presidential shots. <clears throat> and the shots. next prodigy, mini brown guy <laughs> with a poofy hair. It's <laughs> <laughs> giving you the finger behind the scenes. Yeah, I love it. Uh, no, man. I appreciate you guys, bro. This was a lot of fun for me. Awesome conversation. Um, like I said, bro, stay in touch. Fucking. No, man. 100%. Love what anytime. you guys are doing. Anytime you need us, just holler at us. Yeah, just hit us. I love what you're doing, bro. I love the fact that you put on for creatives and other artists Mm -hmm. and just people behind the scenes. Yeah, appreciate it. Shout out to you, bro. Thank you, man. We're going to work on something in the future. I definitely know that. Um, But yo, Brown Guy, TK, shout out to you guys, Toronto Black, everyone else in the building. Fuck with you guys. Versatile Vigilante. Like, follow, subscribe. We're out here. Let's get it.